thing that we need to do with GDP is look at categories of stuff that is counted and what is actually left out. The first thing that you need to know about GDP is that it is the sum total of a country's production. There are two ways to do that. We already talked about it. The expenditures approach, C plus I plus G plus X spend, and the income approach where you're adding together the money people make. The money people make should be equal to the money that people earn because, or the money you spend should be equal to what people earn because it's earned by somebody when you spend it. All right, so what is counted in that? The first thing is final goods and services. That means goods and services that are purchased by their ultimate user. They're not being used in further production. So on the flip side of that, what is not being counted? Intermediate goods. For example, if you're looking at a pair of sneakers, what are some of the components of the sneakers? You have leather, you have the rubber soles, you have insoles, you have thread, you have it being stitched together, you have shoelaces being added, they're sold to you in a box, and they're wrapped in tissue paper, and probably have those annoying blobs of, of stuff stuffed into the toe that you didn't notice when you tried the shoes on and you jammed your toes into them, and that sucks. But anyhow, there are a lot of things that go into all of the products that you buy. And if we added up the value of all of those intermediate components, we would inflate the, the price of the shoe. We can't add up all of the labor and everything else that went into each stage. We have to look only at the value that is added at each stage. We don't want to double count it. We only want to count the value of the final good when it's actually sold to the person who's going to use it. So final goods, not intermediate goods. We want to count what are called productive transactions. We do not count non-productive transactions. And there are a whole bunch of things we could put in this category. I once spent an hour on the phone with an insurance company having a non-productive transaction. Well, that can happen. All right, what are some non-productive transactions? If you buy or sell something used, buy a house that was built in 1920. That counted in the GDP for 1920. It doesn't count the GDP for this year. Because if you count sales of things that are used, then you are double counting them, which inflates your GDP, and again, does not give you an accurate picture of what your national production is. So if you buy something used, that's not included. If it's a transaction that just involves the transfer of money, if it's just a transfer of money, then that's not production. If you buy a unit of stock, that's not production. That's a share of ownership in a, in a company. Buying and selling stocks and bonds does not count in GDP. It's not a product. It represents a share of ownership. That's considered a non-productive transaction. Anything that is off the books, if you're familiar with that expression, off the books or under the table, if somebody is getting paid and they're not filing taxes, then the government doesn't know about their labor or their production, and we can't count that. Similarly, transactions that are illegal do not count in GDP. 
It would seem a little bit self-serving, perhaps, if we made things illegal and then added the sales of illegal drugs into our GDP. Oh, you're not supposed to do this, but hey, look at our great numbers. We cannot count that stuff. It's not reported, and it's unethical for us to do that. There are, however, several countries in the world that have most of their GDP wrapped up in their drug trade. We are Yo, not I'm slinging them. these rocks for the, for the economy, man. All right. So we want stuff that happens in the current year. We want final goods. We want productive transactions. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we want to add here. Um, these are going to be the biggest things that you're going to want to remember. And we want to look only at value added. not value inflated. Because if you count all of the intermediate goods, you're going to get a number that is not really reflective of what you're doing nationally. 